Hi, I am Chef Susie Norris, and this is Chef Stephanie Einstein. Welcome to Food Market Gypsy TV. Hi. Hey. <laughs> you ready to cook today? Oh, I am. What are we making today? Oh, we are making southern fried chicken. And you know, since we're both from the south, uh -huh. this is going to be interesting. I'll tell you why it's going to be extra interesting, oh, Susie. Oh, what's the matter? Um, so this is kind of embarrassing, okay. but... I grew up in Georgia, and I have never made homemade fried chicken. Ah, I see. I don't think you're alone. I really? Don't think you're alone. People are afraid <laughs> of it. People are afraid of it. Why? Because it's a lot of hot oil. Yeah. Yes. And it's a lot of hot oil. I'm not sure what kind of oil to use. Right. Um, I don't feel like I have the right equipment. You know, it's just, it's kind of daunting. I get you. I get you. And... Here's the thing. Um, I'm a pastry chef, I'm a baker, and I worked in a culinary school. I worked at Le Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts for five years. And let me tell you, those chefs love to make fried chicken. Do they? They really? do, and they taught us pastry chefs everything we need to know. So I'm gonna help you. Oh, I'm gonna thank help you. you. <laughs> and I also have a great book, because you know, um, fried chicken is a southern regional thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I just got back from Georgia, as a matter of fact. Oh. And I'm telling you, there are so many chefs reinventing fried chicken, reimagining fried chicken. So there's no right or wrong. You don't you can put spices in it, you cannot put spices as long as it's crispy and not, you know, too chewy Oily. inside. Right. Yeah. There's things we don't want. But um I have a good guide on this also and that is a book by Thomas Keller, famous California uh, chef. Of the Thomas Keller. Yes. <laughs> French laundry and New York restaurants per se being one of them. And now, in his book, per se, he talks about fried chicken at some length, and he talks about buttermilk and fried chicken. Now, mm -hmm. buttermilk is something that we believe in in the South. I'm from Kentucky myself. Oh, yes. And since yeah. it's Derby Day, you know, we've, we've, you know, this is not our first meal today, let's put it that way. Yeah. So, <laughs> and buttermilk is something that is like a Southern thing, again, across regions. We have been soaking the chicken in buttermilk. Just overnight? To, overnight to get it moist and to then allow us to work with spices and kind of traditional frying methods and we're going to walk you through how you do that, what you're looking for, what are the temperatures, what do we want, what do we want in a good piece of fried chicken. Yeah, what are we yeah. looking for? Yeah, right. Okay. okay, well what's first? What do we have to do first to get the ball rolling? Well, you know you need a good pan. You need a good pan. Okay. And we, we've got to talk about this when I heard you were coming over and we started saying, okay, well, tell me how you like to fry chicken. And you're like, I don't fry chicken. I was like, right. oh, wait, wow. Well. But you fry a lot of things. You cook a lot. Mm -hmm. And you just got married and got this beautiful pan, right? I did. This is my loge. It's like a Dutch oven, um, but it's got a coating on the inside. So it's not the kind of raw Dutch oven that you have normally where it's, you know, you have to season it and you know, the whole cast iron deal. Um, so it's got a coating on the inside that protects it from, you know, food sticking to it and such. Well, it's like an enamel, isn't it? Right yeah. Over, and it's, so it's got the benefit of cast iron, the heaviness, and then this enamel. Um, and this is And a nice heavy yeah. lid. Yeah. yeah, that's your brand Loge. Yeah. I like it. Okay. And then you guys, I've also seen Le Creuset from Ferrand's. Yes, this is like the classic, right? Yes. Like, this is what everyone aspires to. <laughs> well, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful Le Creuset heavy cookware. It's very expensive though, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can just tell you, like when my husband and I were looking at different options as yeah. far as, oh, what do we want to put on our registry for our wedding? Yeah. Um, La Crusade was in the 300s, wow. and the loge that we ended up choosing was, I think, $67, right. both on Amazon, but right. yeah. huge difference. It's a big difference. Huge difference. Um, so, so they're both these cast iron pots with enamel coating, and they're both designed to last a really long time, right? These are investment pieces. Right. Okay. Um, so we're going to do a, a test to see if we use the same chicken, the same recipe, the same technique, which fries better? Are they yeah. the same? In that, in that case, maybe you can save yourself some money here. Yeah, right? we'll find out. Okay. So we are looking for this oil to come up over 300 degrees. Ooh, that's pretty high. It's pretty high. And when you make caramel, you know that goes up um, over 300. So we know it's going to be very hot, very hot. Oil in your kitchen is always a cause for 
caution. Yes, um, that's one of the reasons I was afraid of it, right. for sure. Yeah. And we do a lot of um, thinking about safety when you're working with large vats of hot oil, really when, whenever you're in the kitchen. Yeah. Whenever you're in the kitchen. Um, we've washed our hands before we started, yeah. as we always do. And now with the oil, I know obviously there are a ton of different kinds of oil that we can right. use when we're cooking. Right. Um, what kind of oil is best for the fried chicken we're making today? Well, I like canola oil. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is it's got a low smoke point. And we were talking earlier about high, high smoke point and low smoke point. For instance, you can't just cook fried chicken in olive oil because it, it smokes, it burns before it cooks the chicken. It's hot enough. Yes. Right, yeah, And yeah. this one can control that better for you. Um, and then they also um, are lighter, uh, vegetable oil, canola oil, peanut oil, all work for fried chicken. There are more, there are more. Uh, safflower oil, you mm -hmm. can blend those. Um, but if you're into quick and easy, yeah. um, just, you, you need a lot of it. So we got some at the at the supermarket. We got the jumbo size. Yeah. And if you're if you're a regular fryer, which is not you, but if you become a regular fryer, um, some people will strain the oil through a paper towel and reuse it because oh, it's, it's yeah? a shame to buy a whole jug every time you fry chicken or fry an oyster, right? Right. But you can reuse it, and by draining it through a paper towel in a sieve you are cleaning it, really. So mm -hmm. all the all the bits of good fried uh, dredge yeah. stay there and um, and it cleans it. So you can wow. do that. You can do that. That's it's a great way to save money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I mean, you know, canola, canola oil isn't as expensive as some of the other oils, you know, like walnut oil. Or right, whatever. right, right. But, um, but it definitely adds up, especially when you have to use so much to do any kind of frying method. Right, right. It's a lot because we want that to cover the chicken. We want mm -hmm. it to cover the chicken, it has to go all the way in. So you can't just do, it's not like a saute where you're just going to put a little oil in there. No, we've got two heavily loaded vats of heating oil. Okay. Yes, that's that. So that's going. That's going. And we were talking about that chicken. I want to show it to you. Yeah, let me see what you did here. we got it going in buttermilk. Just straight buttermilk out of the milk section of your oh, grocer's. Man. This looks great. So when you went to the store, did you just get a whole chicken and pack it up yourself? Or do they actually sell it in these pieces that are already cut for you? Yes, they do sell it like that. It's called um, a, a frying chicken, they call it, or a oh. fryer. You can actually cut it up, absolutely. You can buy a whole chicken and cut it up. And we, in, um, in culinary school, we call it fabricating a chicken. Hmm. And um, my husband makes fun of me because I don't like to do that. <laughs> you like to get it already done? I like it. It's somebody else work, cut the right? chicken. Yeah. No, but you can. And you know, it's not a bad thing to do. And maybe some other time you and I will just roll up our sleeves and we'll do that because we can. But we don't have to. We can just buy it. I know. Use pieces. This is 2017. Yeah. <laughs> And we're busy, right? A lot of people are busy. You don't have a lot of time. Right. So um, so they cut this up for me in in the perfect sizes for frying. Like you would get at the fried chicken fast food store, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why we wouldn't just go down to the fast food chicken store and buy this, right? Why, yeah, why not? Why not this trouble? Okay. One reason, and this freaks me out. I'm from Kentucky, as I've told you. Yeah. So... We used to get Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm -hmm. um, and we'd have a bite of that, and you know, whatever, with the family bucket, you know, the whole thing. And I didn't have any of that for about 30 years. I moved to California, we're healthy, and we- Very you know, health focused. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you know, you don't eat fried chicken every day, and you go a long time without it. Well, I tasted that fried chicken 30 years later, and it tasted exactly the same. Mm. Like, that's just weird. You can't, I mean, the chicken's, you know, the terroir of a chicken, of what it's eating and what's in season, and are different. It should, right. should be a variation. That was Kentucky. This is California. It should taste a little different, and it doesn't. So that's an indicator that there is some, um, there's some control factor. There's a corporate control factor on that chicken. You don't want that in your food. No. You don't need that. Yeah. You want it to taste like you want it to taste. So we are going to um, use fresh buttermilk for this. We're gonna dredge the chicken in flour, a sort of seasoned flour, mm. more buttermilk, more flour, and then we're gonna fry it. So we can control what it tastes like. We can control the spices. We know this is fresh, we just bought it. We know the buttermilk's high quality. 
you can go all the way organic on all these ingredients and and have organic fried chicken if you want it's, yeah it's just going to be better and and these fresh items are always better than than relying on um, people who might have cost as um, a determining factor on what level of quality they use I mean, I mean I mean high volume cost like so they might have powdered mashed potatoes to go with that for instance whereas oh, you yeah. would just make Buy your own a potatoes. potato and yeah right do your right thing. or kale salad you could make that's a healthy way a to healthy go. kale salad to go with your fried chicken and I thought we could do that today that's a great idea yeah and you know that. the nice thing about kale too is um, it's so nutritious yes but sometimes it can taste really bitter yes so it's it's gonna be a good lesson with you I think on how to make it more flavorful and enticing um, for something that's so good to be putting in your body well let's try that let's try that let's check on our temperatures here how are we doing pretty good pretty good um, now I've got my thermometer here we've been talking a little bit about thermometers they're great I love them yeah. sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and um, so you need kind of backup methods Today, mine is not working. Ah, so we got to get another one. Fear not. I have this. Oh, this is the special one. This is a special one. This is a, um, a high price gadget um, that is, that you, what do you call that, a laser? Is that what it is? Yeah, it, like that. it uses scans it. Read. And I now know that my oil is 182. Oh, So okay. we're halfway there. Halfway. We're halfway there. That's pretty good. What we can do while we wait for that to heat up is prepare. We gotta get our flour ready. We gotta get our flour ready. We need okay. to season it. And so I put some bowls out and then I hid them for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. Especially if it's like the middle of the day. I'm like, oh, what what was I doing? I you know, we get we have a lot on our minds. Yeah. We're busy. Okay. So this is a this is just a simple way to make a dinner. You know, to make something homemade. And delicious and appeasing is suitable for a dinner party casual mm -hmm. barbecue or you can make this fried chicken and take it to a picnic or a potluck whatever like it's that. kind of impressive right like it's homemade to make your own fried chicken not many people do that at least not out here not in LA <laughs> right so we're gonna start with just flour all-purpose flour like you have in your cupboard right here okay you use this for baking delicious we need about six cups of this for this because we're doing a lot of dipping and dredging all right mm -hmm. uh, let me get a measuring cup okay let's see you know what I bet you we can wing it you think so get it wing it with the chicken ah. oh I did that um, because we're we know that we're gonna take that buttermilk soaked chicken mm -hmm. we're gonna dredge it in here shake off the excess dip it in buttermilk again dip it in more flour so we have as long as we have enough to do all that we're good that's true right yeah, yeah so yeah. sometimes you can you can take shortcuts I think people get very very married to their um, recipes and that's good but you also you, you, you get it gets easier you right get a more practice you get more confident um, and we're seasoning this flour that's yes, right we are gonna season it. how do you like to season yours I tell you I always start with salt because in fact maybe you could get in there and um, couple of pinches of each one all right yeah salt brings out the flavor and in addition to tasting the salty brings out other flavors that you're going to put in there yeah for me today i'm feeling a little bit of garlic salt garlic salt um again so easy to find in the grocery store it's just this is it's all easy stuff it's yeah. right there you can just do this on your way home from work um mm. Garlic like, pretty much makes everything better. I know. And then smoked paprika. Mm. Um, Give it a little heat. Yep. You can use regular paprika. You can use cayenne pepper. This is, we are going for a little heat right here. I think that's the southern way. Yeah. I think it's a good way to, it. to go. Yeah. Especially when you get into Creole cuisine and New Orleans and all that stuff. There's a lot of peppers. And that's, this comes from peppers. Um, anything with heat generally comes from peppers. Yeah. Capsicum family, I think we say it. Is that right? Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. You guys know we gotta have some bonnets <laughs> out there, right? Yeah, I'm right? sure. I'm sure. They're native to um, to Mexico, and when the settlers came, over, shall we say maybe not settlers, maybe conquistadors mm -hmm. came over. Um, this would peppers were one of the things that they brought back um, to the to the old world. That was yeah. like wow, you can get that much heat out of a plant. And like <laughs> thank God too, honestly, because. It can make so many things that would normally taste really bland or 
not, you know, appetizing amazing. Right. Yeah. And, th and think about them with their regionality. They weren't, they weren't going down to the Thai food shop every, you know, right. Right? they yeah. couldn't do all that. So, so this is a way, um, this was, this was an incredibly important spice in the New World pepper. Pepper and peppers. I know, they were war spot, right? War spot. Spice wars. Spice wars, they're real. And this is red pepper here? Um, yeah, this is a mix of red and black pepper that my friend gave me this little doll. It's adorable. Babushka. It's a babushka. Aww. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's cute, right? It's very cute. So let's go, we, we, we both like the pepper. I think oh, we're yeah. kind of responding to that, so let's just get a lot of it. Mm. So there's red pepper, there's um, white pepper. They all come from the same um, pepper berry, um, but the mm. black ones are, are more seasoned, they have more flavorful. The red and the white are a little milder. So we've white got them all in is pretty Ooh. traditional with, I mean, white, um, white pepper is pretty traditional when you use it with chicken, right? Like, yes, I feel like I see it in a lot of recipes. It, it, it gives it, it's slightly more subtle. It's mm. slightly more subtle, I think. Yeah. Ooh. Man, there one time I had a chicken fried rabbit leg. Oh wow! And they used this delicious like white pepper gravy, and it was oh, probably like a thousand calories per bite, but eh. so delicious. It was <laughs> so good. It was so good. Wow, sounds good. Yeah, we're getting I mean, hungry here. Whew. I know. I'm excited about this stuff. Okay, I'm gonna check our temperatures again. Oh, and maybe while I get, you could get us some buttermilk working. I All right, I only need one. We only need one buttermilk. And just kind of pour to the, the brim of the bowl. Yeah, pour right. to the brim of the bowl. So you see, we're using a lot of counter space. It's, it's you know, it's fun. And if you have um, if you have kids that like to cook, mm -hmm. this is a super fun, very satisfying thing to make. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, everybody, everybody loves fried chicken. Everybody. Yeah. And you get to watch 14. it happen. 314. Oh, we're getting close. Oh, wow. And let's see how the other one's doing. Because remember, this is a test of so which pan makes the better chicken. This one's a little slower. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Mm. Of course, they're different sizes, and that does matter. Yeah, that's but, true. But it doesn't really matter to us today because we're we're kind of just getting a basic sense of do they cook the same? Right. Or, or, is, or it is, the, is, the, yeah. is it even? Is it is it even? Um, is one of them giving you soggy chicken? Right? right, you don't want that. You don't want that. Okay, so this one, we can turn up the heat a little bit, get it to catch up, 255. We've got a little catch up to do. Okay. We'll start here. Often with fried chicken, you want to be aware that the dark bits take a little longer. Mm. So that's good information. Keep in mind. I didn't know that. Yeah, they tend to um, cook a, need to cook a little longer. And we're going to, because we're learning, we're going to stop and open the chicken sometimes along the way. Is it done yet? How do you tell if it's done? Right, um, because right. sometimes I think, you know, what if it's golden brown on the outside, but then when you open it up, it's pink. Yeah, that's a real problem. Yeah, that's a real problem. And again, you want to you want to know your temperature because if it's if it's really raw inside, you should not be eating it. No, <laughs> no. No matter how good that crust tastes. Not unless you want to be up all night. <laughs> oh no, no, we're not doing that. Okay, so let's take. Um, are you, do you like uh, drumsticks? Do you like um, chicken breast, chicken oh, thighs? Man, I like every got them all now. Yeah, let's start with the breast. Okay. These are the big portions. Okay. All right. We and we're going to lay it in one. Yep. After you, okay, so you kind of like drain it off into yeah, the bowl. Yeah, that's right. This first. is just plain buttermilk. We just poured it right out of the carton in there. And then just like this. Okay. I'm going to flip it. Yeah. And you know that, I love that word dredge. Because yeah. that's kind of what you're doing. You're like, you know, dredge. Get a, a nice layer on it. Yeah. And then you shake it off. Okay. And this is what not everybody. Sometimes people are gonna go right into the oil. That's cool. But we're yeah. gonna go and we're going. You know, we're going southern. Okay? Oh yeah. We're going southern. So we're. This is gonna give you more of a batter, and it's gonna give you more things to brown. Mmm. So it gives it like a second layer, kind of. Yeah. It's a deep. It's a deep, deep fried, deep coated thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. What it is. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll get these guys ready, prepped and ready to go. You want to grab this? Oh, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, just a platter of some kind so we can, once we've got these dredge bits ready, we'll oh, stock them up. Beautiful Chinese book. I like that. Thank you. 
All right, we're just gonna put them up here, I think. Good thinking, good thinking. You wanna do the next one? Yeah, try it out. Okay. Try out my new skills. Here, and um, I'm gonna move these. One thing that's on our mind since we're making this um, incredibly fattening fried chicken is we thought, uh, we really need to make sure we make the salad and not just sit here and eat fried chicken. <laughs> Although so, that was, I mean, that's basically that my dream, like before I die, I'll just eat <laughs> a big vat of fried chicken by myself. <laughs> so we're gonna, we've got some pine nuts here. Pin, pignoles, pignoles, as they say in Italy, pine nuts. Mm. Um, and they're really easy to work with. We're just gonna toast them for about 10 minutes and get them a little brown. That'll bring up their flavor. And that gives you a chance to get this get this going here and get our oils together. Yeah. Behind you. All right. Thank you. You know, we talked about this so many times in in the professional kitchen. People are running around with knives and hot things. All the time. It's very dangerous. And the same is true in a home kitchen. Really, you've got hot pans, knives, and then on top of that, kids, dog, friends. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, your drunk guests and all these things. <laughs> so you got to uh, talk to people in the kitchen and say, I'm behind you, or hop behind, or watch out, hot pan. Um, be very vocal about that if that is the right thing. That's way. a smart way to go, because I'll tell you, I do not want to be run over with a hot pan. No, it's really <laughs> dangerous, and these things really do happen. Really do happen. I believe it. You're doing great. Look at all that. Look at that. Ooh, I'm trying to be diligent some. about this. You're doing great. And that's why we didn't worry too much about measuring the flour and getting exactly the right spices because we're, we're, we got a ways to go. We got, we're yeah. going to be breading and dredging and dipping and shaking and baking. <laughs> yeah. Shake and bake, right? <laughs> Wasn't that a thing for a while? It Is was it still a thing? thing. Oh, you know what that was? I think it's probably, I, we could probably pick one up in the aisle right now, but let's don't. Uh. Because we don't need to because we're doing this. It was a shake and bake a kit where you had the seasonings and flour and a bag and all you had to do is get the chicken and go shake and then bake and hey. but that does raise an interesting point could we bake these and would they be good would they do you know i have an idea let's do one ah let's do it let's because we know the oven's on for our, our uh, other item yeah we're gonna throw it in there okay chicken leg we'll take this one as a thigh is it i think so and we're just gonna bake it <laughs> We're gonna bake it at 350 and see if it's anywhere near good as fried. Uh, I have, I have odds on that. All right. I have odds. What's your What's your hypothesis? Well, actually, you know, technically, today is Derby Day, or, you know, if really every day is Derby Day for me. But, <laughs> um, but we were watching the Kentucky Derby recently, and um, my horse lost. So I'm I'm really not a good gambler. Um, but I would gamble <laughs> that that the fried chicken is superior to the baked chicken. Oh yeah. I'm just guessing. So when you're frying something, like the cooking process obviously is very different from uh, if you're baking it. Yes. And a lot of times they say like baking is healthier. And is that only because of the oil factor or what's, do you know the difference between? It is strictly, it's all about the oil. Ah. Because in addition to this flour and buttermilk, none of which are bad, but they're not calorie free, right. um, to then add heavy caloric oil on top of that, which we do, you know, it sort of seals it all in there together, is adding just a whole other layer of fat. Mm. So if you don't want that, that's fine, bake it. You just want, we'll, we'll see what you get. We're going to do that. This, today is the day of experiments. That's right. So I'm going to check our temperature. Okay. Trying to let this drip off. You're doing great, Steph. You don't, you don't seem fearful. I'm not fearful yet, but I also haven't put my body near the hot oil yet. <laughs> so Ooh, we have heat. Yeah, we heat. We're ready. This guy's ready. Oh, okay. I'm feeling ready to fry. All right. What fry? happens if it's too hot? Huh? What happens if it's too hot? If it's too hot, um, if it's too hot. Oh, that's we didn't even introduce Jesse the cameraman. Oh, hi Jesse. Hey, hi. Jesse. Okay, he has a lot of questions, and he eats a lot of food with us, too. That's true. We need him to taste test. We need test. him. He's our taste tester. But you can get too hot. Uh, it'll start to smoke. It'll burn. And um, so, that, so does that, like, totally ruin the, the, whatever you're frying? Usually it cools off as you put more stuff in, because mm -hmm. we'll have to keep an eye on the temperature. As you put more stuff in, it cools off. We want to be around 360. Mm. So that's, where, that's where, where we are, at least with that one. Let me see where we are here. Oh, this one 313. 
Come on, little pup. This is like this is like the Kentucky Derby over here. One's going fast, and then the other one slows down. Oh yeah, the little pot that could. <laughs> It'll be easier for you when you're just minding one pot. Trust me. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm getting a little bit of the clumpies over here with okay. the um, flower. Is that yes. is that a technique? issue or that is just a, a, a problem in life issue and you can take <laughs> your minutes and you can go clean those off because there's no other way to do it okay yeah and yeah. don't worry if you get a little because you we can even that out if you want yeah a little later but you want your utensils sometimes you have just have to stop and rinse that's cool I'm gonna just do like that. with your hands you know you have to you have to wash your hands whenever you are inclined to it's a good thing to do all right so I'm gonna put a leg in both this guy's going to come up in temperature. We're going to be comfortable. All right. And we are going to get some frying in. Yes. Good. Leg to leg. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, see, if we had a little, just a, a, an inch, if we were trying to cut down on our fat, and just had an inch of oil, you're not gonna get that. You're not gonna get that dunk effect. You're not gonna get the whole leg cooking at the same time. Now, what should we be looking for to know that it's getting close to finishing? Golden brown. Mm. It's that simple. We just, because we've got it surrounded by oil, we don't have to flip it, turn it. We really don't. We just wait for it to turn into golden brown. Okay. And, um, well, I'm not gonna go in there and show you just yet, but I might, I might pull this. I'm gonna pull the camera over to the hot oil and look. You see what that looks like? Oh, it looks so bubbly. Can't see too much, but you can see that it's not golden brown yet. Right. So right. we're gonna pull it up and show you many, many times until we get it perfect. And you're still breading there, I can see. Still breading. I We've like only it. got another one piece, I think. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It already smells like fried chicken. Mm. Wow. That, yeah. that makes me happy. I know. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to this right now, and I'm, I'm not feeling as scared as I thought I would. Another thing that I like to do, and... Woo! This is nerdy. Okay, come on. What is it? Um, I like to wear gloves sometimes when I find, oh, I'm afraid of these huddles. I oh, go, oh I know where your gloves are. Oh, you found them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, you see, because I use them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, in food service, you're often required to wear gloves when you're serving the public. Um, I worked in um, the chocolate business for a long time. and You have two books. I do have two books. I wrote um, one called Chocolate Bliss about uh, chocolate and the story of chocolate and Oh, cakes and cookies and everything you would want to know about chocolate. All the good things, basically. All in life. the good things. Yeah. And then um, handcrafted candy bars, where we take, say, we make a mallow cup, we make a heat bar, we make um, uh, Milky Ways, Almond Joys. We don't call them that. We have new names for them because they're handmade and they're better, mm -hmm. and they're basically candy bar makeovers from scratch. That's a good good mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Clippers. All right. Tongs. I like to have a few pairs of tongs for this reason. Sometimes they do get clumpy. And, oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. That is kind of a nice color. I might need to go a little more. I did turn that over. Let's see about this one. A lot blonder. Yeah? I mean, really, not exactly platinum, but considerably blonder. Telling. Interesting. Don't know how to quite to interpret that, but they're cooking in different cases. Now remember they're different size pans, but they're both cooking very nicely because I think that's a heck of a dread right there, honestly. Yeah, that's true. You know, you coat it. You have to coat it heavy. Hey, if you're vegan, maybe you're going to think about doing cornstarch instead of flour. Mm. That can work, and you will still get that beautiful color. If you're vegan and you're making fried chicken. There's something wrong. What am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you, you want to do, do some vegan, vegan, right? Yeah, tofu. You know, sometimes a vegan wants to... Uh, there's a little crunch. That's right. Okay. I can't imagine my life without a crunch. I love a good crunch. Love a good chip. Absolutely. And you know, when we made hot rounds recently, we put toast points in there with the hot oh, cheese yeah. sauce. It made all the difference. And the crunchy bacon. Really it was good. the best. Yeah. Wow. So, we carry on. Can you burn it? Yeah, you can. You can burn it. 
we're not going to do that today. Um, so we're just checking it. I'm going to bring it over to you so you can see it. But I'm going to do that thoughtfully again. You know, rather than me just slinging it over the camera, I thought, no, I'm going to think. I'm, I don't want hot oil spilled around the kitchen. So I'm going to take a bowl, take the sack pan, take the towel. Right. I'm going to split this Let me see. Me. Sorry. That's all right. You've got some serious color on that. Yeah. Mm. I'm feeling that might be done. You think so? That's a good maybe. We could maybe do a little more. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if, so we can find out if it's done by checking wow. the internal temperature, right? Checking internal temperature. It's, you know, that's, a, that is again, one of the safety food science things that we do so that we don't poison anybody. Right. <laughs> and or ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> right. We don't like that. I don't want to be poisoned. No, we don't. Or Jesse. Need. Hey, we're good. We're we're over 200, which is probably kind of hot. So, so if we like the color of the crust, we're done. We, we don't have to worry about it being raw inside. That that makes me feel better. Yeah, you know. So, out of curiosity, let's see what our oil is now. We've kept the fire going. We're at medium heat. And 360. That's right where we want to be. I think we want to smack another piece in there, don't you? All right, I'm ready. And I think we'll take this guy out. I like to drain them, so I'm going to trade this. Oh, thank you. Come man, you're so special. <laughs> so I'll helpful. Over there, over here. All right. Yeah, you want to drain them on paper towels to take the excess oil out. All right, and we are done battering. And you guys, you may be wondering, what's the right temperature for chicken? When is it safe? When is it not safe? Um, 165 for poultry is, is the guiding rule, 165. Mm. And you can, I won't give you all the sort of shades of variations, but 165 for a whole chicken is safe. Now, uh, if you want a little tenderness, pinkness inside, 150 you could do that. But USDA says 165, so that's your guideline, that's your guidepost. So you okay. don't uh, make yourself think. So if it's 120, you're not done. If it's 80, you're not even close. But when you're up, you know, when you're up close to to that, you're fine. How long do you have to let it cool before you eat it? Oh, he's hungry. <laughs> I'm hearing the hunger jumping out of the cameraman. That's cool, Jesse. Um, you don't. You can eat it hot. I mean, I think if you want to. Maybe we could even, if I put my hand on it, it's super hot right now. Mm. But we're gonna, remember, we're gonna check the inside temperature at various times, we're gonna look at them. So we'll slice it open and we'll maybe give you a piece. Woo! Now, for you, Susie, yeah. do you like to have any special um, wow. sauce, like that you eat your fried chicken with? Like um, ranch or honey mustard. Ranch. Oh, I love honey mustard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bubbling over a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we got a little bit of bubble over. Is that okay? That's cool. I see, it didn't splash me, and if it did, I had my glove. It's okay. Very smart. I'm okay. Um, we also we always cook with um, a, a moist cloth around for spill cleanup. Keep our station clean. Yeah. We're gonna rinse this and you know just kind of clean as you go. Yeah. Makes things easier, get a little more organized. Alright, let's slice that guy open. See how it turned out. You could do this with a knife. I happen to have scissors here and we know that scissors work. Okay, I don't mean to brag, but I'm getting some serious moisture right now. I'm getting some Ooh. crunch and moisture. Oh, but you know it's what? raw inside. Yeah. Ooh, I'm getting my thermometer again and saying, what the heck? You did not measure the way we thought you would. 134. See why we do this? This is why. This is exactly You would why. not want to bite into that. No, and I was kind of ready. And I know he was no. raw. Let's put it back in. All right. That's yeah, because that's really good to know. You don't want that. Let's see. It's too pink. Now, if you're in a fine dining restaurant, you might have chicken. Um, I don't think I'd want chicken quite that light. I don't think. I think I would make me concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah the chicken, you know, there is a certain uh, just a hint of pink for tenderness, but that's too light for me. Now, steak. But, 
skinny is rare as hell. Take it. Sushi is sushi. Yeah. We're not really afraid of raw food, but mm, undercooked chicken, bad news. Bad news. So. In the meantime, yeah. what we can do is we can start our kale salad. Let's do. Let's absolutely do it. All right. So okay. first thing we need is kale. Kale. We got it. Okay. It's over there. All right. We did. This is really kind of um, a sort of Saturday meal when you don't want to be in the kitchen all day, but you're home and you're running around and you want to do something healthy and delicious. Everyone's gonna love it. So yeah. we went. We went with um with pre-cut kale. You can do kale from the farmer's market. You can do kale fully. We just went with the pre-cut so we can throw it in a bowl. And a lot have it easier. Bowl. Yeah. And sometimes it saves you, you know, it saves you from the rinsing and all that. And sometimes you don't need it. So I'm going to put a couple of handfuls in here. A couple of heaping handfuls, I should say. Okay. And I'm just pulling this chicken around so it doesn't um, sink to the bottom and stay there. Mm. All right. I'm satisfied with that. Does that look good to you? It's great. Okay. All right. What else are we putting in this salad? Well, you know, here's the thing with kale. Like, a lot of people roll their eyes at kale. They go, ooh, kale is so, it's so bitter. It's so bitter and kind of healthy. And like, got these big stalks in it, right? These big stalks. Let's pull those out. Let's pull yeah. most of those out so we don't have so many. And now if you're working with farmer's market, uh, big, big leaves of kale, um, you can strip it off the, the spine. Yeah, um, that's pretty easy to do. Yeah, but so you want to minimize the spine. That's kind of what people don't like. Another reason for the spine is the bitter part? Yes, ah. it's very bitter and it's, and it's too hard to eat. It's, you know, it's like, it's like a, a straw, a big piece of straw, hay. Yeah. Like chewing a big... Thing. Hey, we don't, we're not doing that today, no. So, so we're gonna trim that up a little bit and then we're gonna soften it with lemon juice because lemon juice brings you flavor and then also softens the, the, the very, very dense kale leaves for us. Yeah. But don't forget, we put pine nuts in there and they only need 10 minutes. Oh, so we don't wanna burn them. Very nice and toasty at this point. Yeah. Now here, I'm just, not even seeing much color, they're just starting to sweat a little bit. A yeah. little tiny bit. So we can go a little further as long as you don't forget. So I'm thinking another five minutes. That sounds mm -hmm. good. All right. Come on, stems. All right. I'm going to put the last of our fried chicken in there. And I'm going to. This is our guinea pig. We're going to keep testing that till we're sure it's done. And by the way, you know, is it worth buying an extra drumstick or two as you're going, as you're learning to do this kind of test on it? Your thermometer says something, you think you got it, but you want to test it. Look, we did get a darker color there. I wouldn't call that burn, would you? No, no, I think that's kind of probably about right. Yeah, right? that's better. Yeah. Okay, so good. So we'll test that again and see if, hey, if I ate in, bit into this with my teeth, would I feel good about the chicken what it looks done. like, yeah. Yeah, do be careful. You're right to be careful about it. The big pieces, of course, take a, a lot longer to cook. And you were telling me that the darker pieces usually take a little longer as well, right? Correct. So, do you know why that is? Is that because of the, like, fat content, or? I wonder if it's the toughness of the meat, or Perhaps, that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe someone looked that up for us. And Give a hollow. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe, maybe one of our viewers is a scientist. I keep waiting for those guys to come around. I know. So listen. There's in. women. Yeah. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Step it up. Um, why does dark meat cook slow? That's a great question. Why? Yeah. Why? 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 And it's so it's so juicy and delicious. And oh yeah, we're gonna have a lot of that going on. Okay. Um, okay, great. So I feel pretty good about the ratio of um, stem to leaf here. Great. I'm just so going to clean our utensil. Change wonderful. it up. Woo. All right. And I noticed that we had some scallions over there. Oh, yeah. We're going to get right over there and deal with that. All right. So these guys, tell me. Yes. 
I'm going to tell you, these are uh, green onions. Mm -hmm. Scallions um, will work. I think they're a different variety. I, um, I, I grab these all the time just because you can use most of them and you can just cut that bit off. So, and I trim that the outer layer. I get rid of the outer layer because then mm -hmm. you're just going to have really succulent you know, vegetable inside of it. Ah, okay. Okay, so that's so, that's that so good. I think we a knife. Would you like a knife? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, let's see. I think we've got yeah, some. Um, dead ahead. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Bill Kennedy. So, um, when you've gone through all your tongs like we have today, how are you going to get the chicken out of there? Two forks. That's how. You don't even need fancy cookware. No, you don't. You don't. You don't need a gadget for everything. Mm -hmm. I think you, you know, every time I go in the kitchen store, and believe me, I, I do have a gadget for everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you should. You're a chef. I suppose. But some of them you don't need. And I, I try to be really clear about what I feel like. Hey, this is nice to have, but not essential. Mm -hmm. So, All right. this is one of our um, return to the fryer. And you can see that's starting to get, like, mm -hmm. I want to go a lot darker than that. I like it, but I wouldn't want to go a lot darker than you. Right. No, I think you might be on the edge of burnt if you try to go too much darker. Right. Yeah, because you can burn it if you just walk away for like half an hour. Yeah, yeah. And say, oh, I know the chicken will be done inside now. It's like, yeah, you can, you can really burn it. You don't want to do that. All right, I'm peeling these out. Okay, and I'm going to show you what we got with these breasts going on. I am seeing some really delicious texture. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. See, now, I'm sorry. I love KFC, and I love all my chicken Popeyes, and I, I do. Yeah. yeah. I do. But, you know, we know what this is. Like, you don't really know what they put in their batter to make it taste the way it does. We know this is flour, buttermilk, spices. That's it. Yeah. So, no preservatives, no chemicals, no extra smooth, extra crispy, um, you know, whatever they figured out in the big pharma lab. No. It's right. very simple, very classic. God, that looks pretty. Oh, yeah. We're going to see what we think it might be. $1.99. Okay. That's what it's telling me. I wonder what I think about that. I wonder if I believe that. Should we test it? Let's do it. We want to cut into, like, kind of the biggest portion, right? Right. Because that'll be the... Not cooked, not cooked, not cooked. Mm -mm. Yeah, we has got to go back Stay in. raw. Raw. So you don't want that? So, be patient. Well, that makes sense, too. You know, we were talking about how it's going to take a little bit longer for the bigger pieces. So yes. Yes. That's to be expected. And then these, this poor mango chicken. Let's see, this is the one we cooked twice. See if we got it. This time. Now, oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, Perfect. look how juicy that is. Oh, okay. my gosh. I'm going to give you a close up of this. Yes. Okay. You might want to eat it. Oh, so juicy. So you see the moisture. That moisture is because we let it soak in buttermilk overnight, and we, we didn't, you know, cook it too fast, um, and we've still got a lot of crispiness. And it's not pink. It doesn't look raw. Because it's not raw. It's cooked. It's ready yeah. to go. It's good so, to go. Should we, should we see the cameraman and he can tell us what he thinks? Yeah. Oh, I see the hunger in his eyes already. So crispy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's mm. crispy. That's so good. You want crispy? Oh yeah, I gotta try it out. Right? That is good. Mm. That's really good. It's good. <laughs> so, now, this is before, well, you're, you're the chef, you're going, what does it need? How can you change it? Do you want to salt it more before you serve it? You can do that. You, you can make some adjustments on it, especially when it comes out and it's hot, that's the time to put a little more seasoning on it. Maybe you want to do a fire kick on it, but mm -hmm. you can do that. You can still still work with it. Now here's a question. Yeah. If let's say that you had a taste and you said, "Oh, this does need more salt or something." Right. Um, would it be crazy to try and put any salt into the frying oil, or would that completely destroy what you're doing? Yeah, I don't think it would destroy it, but I'd, I'd rather just bring it out and salt it directly. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Especially while it's hot, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come right into where you want it. Yeah. Whereas if you put it in the pan, you're going to be salting all that oil. Uh, and you don't want to salt the oil, you want to salt the chicken. That's so, true. So, yeah, I would bring it out. And speaking of, I think we're getting close to these. But we don't know, do we? We don't really know. So, 
Yeah, and I have these all sorted out now, so I'm going to go ahead and chop these up. And you, would you say do very kind of skinny cuts along? Yeah, you Maybe know, like I think about a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch, okay. I'll show you this cool tool that I have, you know, the gadget person. Oh, yeah. We talk in baking uh, quarter inch doughs, is very common, half an inch slices. Um, and sometimes you read that in a cookbook and go, I, I don't know where my ruler is. But if you have one of these in your kitchen drawer, you can tell exactly what a quarter of an inch is All in, right. your, in your knife cuts. Perfect. And can you I keep just, it right in your yeah, pocket. Yeah, you can. I, I really like the color on this. I do. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, no, that looks good. Or, Let's cut it and see what it's, how it's That's good. fried chicken. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Now the doneness. We have to check that. While she's checking that, I'm going to be okay, cutting got these about, I think it needs another five minutes because it's a big thing. Yeah, it's a healthy size. That's a healthy size. Now, as you get familiar with your pans and your oil and, and the way you like to do it, you will um, be able to predict a little bit more how long your chicken's going to cook the crust. And, and the one problem by just turning up the heat is that it's going to cook too fast and you're going to burn it. So you want to keep it there at 360 if you can, roughly. Just a guideline. Would you say um, maybe with something that would help it uh, cook more quickly? I don't know. This is a question. But um, I know a lot of times when I'm cooking meat, it'll say to let it be at room temp before mm -hmm. I start cooking it. Yes. But when you, when you've soaked it in that batter or in that buttermilk bath overnight, do you really want to leave it out to come to room temp when it's got that dairy on it? Good question. Um, the food safety window is four hours okay. for when something that should be in the fridge and is not in the fridge starts to turn. And so if, if you're out in the sun at a picnic and you've got that raw chicken and buttermilk out in the sun, mm -hmm. that would happen faster. But for just an, an environment like your kitchen, you've got a four hour window. Um, but you don't want to you don't want to push it. So no. you could absolutely bring that butter milk dipped chicken out and let it come to room temperature and then do your dredging and then do, and that would that would speed things up. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, but do you run the risk of, oh, if maybe something happens and you don't get to it that day and then you leave it out overnight? Yeah, it's ruined. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. So if you know you're getting ready to fry it up, I think it would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that would really kind of help us with some of those temperature issues, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, is this about enough scallions? It think? is. It is. And then let's um, maybe show the camera on that because that still yeah. looks a little crunchy to me, doesn't it, to you? Yeah, the little, little stems. A little crunchy. So we're going to soften it up with lemon juice, and we're going to, oh, our pine nuts. We're going to get our pine nuts going, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get a little more uh, vinaigrette to it, and see what happens. Oh, how about that for timing? Oh, nice. <laughs> they're just browning. They're just browning, and you see they are, they're sweating. Oh, that smells. So delicious. that's the natural oils coming to the surface from the heat. And I really like that because we didn't burn them. <laughs> so easy to forget about these and burn them. And we're not going to do that. They're ready to go. Yeah. All right. And just so you guys can see, I kind of mixed in the scallions here with the kale just to give it a little bit of variety. And we've still got a good, like, bunch of scallions left. So you can save these for something else that you're making. Can you believe this? I just pulled these off my lemon tree this morning. Uh, this isn't is, California the best? <laughs> it is a California thing. It's so great. And um, they're ready to go. I yeah. think we squeeze a whole half of one into that. And we probably have a little gadget. Oh, we do. Oh, nice. We have this gadget. Have you ever worked with one of these before? Oh, yeah. You love those? I love these. Okay. Um, I, love, I love making a green juice in the morning. Ah. And I love using lemon, and I usually put half a lemon in there. There you go. So this is nothing for you. It's awesome. Okay. So you want to cut it in half, right? Right. Just to open it up. And then the nice thing about these gadgets is that they catch all the seeds for you. So you don't have to worry about seeds falling into your salad and somebody 
hurting their tooth on a lemon seed. I really appreciate that about those gadgets. Yeah, like some gadgets are great. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, this is worth it. This is worth every what was this? Maybe like. Ten dollars. I got it free. Yeah, I mean, like you could <laughs> probably find it will. Right? Yeah, like, it's a great gift. It's a great gift. So I'm gonna squeeze this whole half lemon on here, huh? Yeah, whole half lemon. All right. You can see the juice kind of pouring out of there as I'm squeezing. Ah, oh, fresh lemon smells so nice. And you know what I like to do with the lemon rinds after that? What? Put them down the dishwasher and they make this really beautiful like burst of lemon scent come into your kitchen. Wonderful. And you can plant those seeds, right? Yeah, you can plant the seeds, yeah. you can compost. Yeah. Like, there's so many great things you can do with the lemon rind. Alright, we're coming to the end of our chicken. We're gonna let that go. Um, also, kitchen safety. Mm. Um, a lot of times we're busy in the kitchen and we might leave the hot pan here. Well, we might leave something on the stove with that out, and what happens is you forget about it, your friend calls you on the phone, bam! Oh, you don't okay. want that. Yeah, so we always turn the pans like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, child safety, too. Yes. You've got little ones running around. You don't want them to come up and, oh, there's a handle. Absolutely. Bad news. Keep that out of the way. All right, so I'm going to put this over here. Okay. And then let's see what else we've got to work with. Um, we're doing lemons. Yeah, um, we're doing. Do we want to put any seasoning in here? Yeah, I think so. And let's do let's do that mustard vinaigrette. Okay, I think let's do that. How are we so going to make that today? We are going to get some mustard, which I have. Okay. And we have a bit of olive oil. All right. We have a glass right here. And we can even add more lemon into this if you want. Oh, great. We, we can still make got a half. So. So. We'll um, do the taste test, and you know, we cook together a lot, and I always sort of say, as much as you want to taste the stuff with your finger, don't do it. We don't do it. No. We don't do it, because it's such a bad habit, and in the professional kitchen, it's an even worse habit, because you're feeding a lot of people who don't want your germs. That's right. Right? Yeah. So, um, so we always do tasting spoons, and it's a great practice, even at home, and to teach your kids, because, you know, if they're ever servers, <laughs> right. or they're ever chefs, or they're ever cooking for a lot of people. They won't be for long. <laughs> they do that. Yeah, so. <laughs> so fired. Okay, so this is um, this is my favorite mustard, a French mustard. Ah. Yeah, it's very light, and um, and I, I don't I don't endorse a lot of products really. I just tell you what I like. I'm not endorsing. I'm just telling you what I like. It's different. Nice, right. and that's a Dijon, so it's going to be kind Dijon. of spicy, right? Yeah, spicy, and um, from the Dijon region of France, mm -hmm. we do a splash of. Rice wine vinegar. And by splash, I mean two tablespoons in this case. Heavy splash. Yeah, yeah. So and that gives it kind of acidity. Yes, yes. And it's a little lighter than balsamic. We always see mm -hmm. balsamic, but you don't, it's not the only vinegar. There's sherry vinegar, there's apple cider vinegar. Vinegar is red really wine. wonderful. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. So much, and they're all flavor nuances that you can play with. But we're doing citrus, and this is um, rice wine vinegar is quite light, so it goes well with our, with our lemon. Delicious. And then you just, Here's where we are. We've got mustard, we've got vinegar, and then we're gonna add about the same amount of olive oil. And then we're gonna then we're gonna go to taste. What do we need? We need salt, we need pepper, we need whatever we need. Whatever we like. Whatever we like. So let's see. So I've got this olive oil here. I'm gonna do like basically a glug, right? Yeah. Maybe even a double Ooh. glug. Yeah. Now, Ooh. if you're on a diet, you don't want a lot of oil, you go less. Yeah. Less. Use more vinegar. You're gonna get to like vinegar if you're on a diet, right? Yeah. We all love hate. We have love hate with vinegar. <laughs> I know, it's delicious, but also kind of stinky sometimes, right? Yeah, it can if that's all you get, it might not be enough. Let's see. Maybe we can do we wanted some lemon, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna actually cut this lemon in half. Yeah, just the right, just the right balance. Too much would be too much, yeah. Right, and then it kind of sours the whole thing. Sour lemons. All right. I can get it to sit up. Oh, almost. All right, that's all I'm gonna do. And that was only like really a half a squeeze because I didn't want to over limit it. 
gotcha. at this point. Okay, so now for taste test. I think we're out of tasting spoons. You might have to grab one. Yeah, I'll grab one. Now, if we, it's all about texture. Do we, is it too thick or do we, we could just put water in it if we want to um, thin it out a little bit? Yeah. Maybe a splash of water because that, we'll have it with that kale. Okay. And we want every leaf to get a little coating of it. We've got some water over here. Yeah. So let's grab that. And I'm just going to plate up our chicken. All right. Pretty good about that consistency, huh? I'm really good about it. All right, and then you just pour that over the kale salad? Yep. Okay. All of it? All of it. All right. Yeah, because the kale needs softening. No one wants to eat kale by itself. It's That's not true. Good. It's too bitter. It's too bitter. All right. Now remember I talked about the oil cooling off. Mm -hmm. And that is happening. So these are cooking much slower. Um, we didn't have a we didn't have a speed problem with the two pans really. It seemed to me they cooked pretty much the same. Yeah, I think so. Day. Yeah. Um, so we'll do drain them a little bit. Oh, I need a pick the Oh, here we go. Oh, there they are. Right and here. in the meantime, I can put some pine nuts in here. Yeah, let's do pine nuts. And we have oh, we have sharp cheddar grated ready to go. <gasps> that's right the there. best part. Now that's going to make the kale salad better, trust. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to grab that. Thank you. And I'm going to get those last chickens out, because I think you guys get the drill now. We went ahead and grated this just to save time and space, but it's pretty easy. We kind of ate some as we grated. We might have tasted it, yeah. We always do that. You want to make sure it's good cheese, right? Poison testing and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Temperature. The temperature has to be right. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, and I'll do one more. All right, so we're down to our last one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we see the pine nuts, which are. Yes. Did you put those in the oven? No, I put them up here. Ah! In the warming rack. In the warming rack. They don't have to be warm. You can um, make them in advance and just toss them into the salad when you're ready. And I think we're ready, right? I think we're ready. Two handfuls. And then you can save the rest. They make a great snack. Mmm, healthy. Then we're going to toss that. You might need a couple of forks. All right. Great. And toss it around. Toss it around, stir it around, and we'll put it on our plates, and we're going to call that dinner. That sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Make sure this doesn't slip off. This looks Ooh, great. Ooh, it's got a whole creamy thing going on. Yes. You can you can make this in advance and let it sit in the fridge and just kind of chill. Ooh, yeah. You know what? This might even be like a kale salad that my husband Jesse would eat, and he is not a kale person. I don't know. What do you think, Jesse? He's like he is looking at that thing, saying, "No way, no way." Ooh. And you gotta taste it. Yeah. We don't let you have any more fried chicken until you taste it. Okay. Yeah, Jesse. I don't think you understand how good this dressing is. Okay. Are you okay to scoop that out on plate? I am. I'm excited about that. Oh, he's gonna try it right now. Mmm, <laughs> that's really good. Right? Oh, he likes that's really it. Good. Mike, he likes it. We have a believer. Woo, here, let me help you. All right. All right. We are, you know, we are so close to the end of our game here. We are, we are giving you a dinner that even Jesse would eat. Even Jesse likes Even it. Even Jesse likes it. <laughs> so that's a that's a fresh kale salad. Again, this is such a good farmer's market meal. This is a Saturday, a Sunday, um, any time of year, really. You saw what we did with the chicken. That was easy. One stop at the grocery store. A lot of times you can get chicken at the, at the farmer's market, too. So yeah, this is a great there? way to dress up your your fried chicken, too. It's, you know, making it a little bit more healthy. and So much better than the fried chicken at the grocery store. Oh, don't ever buy that. I mean, unless you really have to. But, you know, hey, we've been going, what, about 
30 minutes, 40 minutes, and look what we did. We made this buttermilk chicken, fresh, homemade, kale under salad. an hour, and under an hour, well, we soaked the chicken buttermilk. So it gives you a little planning, but you know, even if we didn't, I bet it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. Steph? Yeah. Wow, well, we did it. Are you afraid anymore? I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid anymore. She's not afraid anymore. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. This was really fun. We're gonna be doing this again next week. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.